Brian, can you want? Okay, so this, this model is called the government speech model, not the free speech model. The model where one person gets to decide what the rest of the campus talks about uh, based on some advertisement guide. Um, what bugs me more though is that this whole, this whole change is reactionary. It's, it's wanting to get one organization off campus. One or two people wanting to, wanting to control the student life of other people on the campus. That should never be the intent of student leaders. I don't think. I'm sorry, but you represent every single student. You're the most evil, horrible one. Um, <laughs> Uh, sorry, I went lost on place. Um, so it, yeah, it's the qual it's the qual today because they there's the evil one today. But who is it? Who is it next year? When there's someone else? When there's, when there's a new president on council? When it's, it's some crazy conservative that wants to get rid of the left coast post? Is that going to be okay? Or if it's just a crazy liberal that wants to get rid of the cow red? Is that okay? What, what order are you trying to get? Is the qual qual is just the first? I assure you, the qual is just the first. Um, okay, this model is also thinly discussed. Thinly guide an objective model, completely objective, uh, where we have the, the executive assistant maybe even uh, taking control over it. That would not, that's not, that's not how it's intended to go. If, it was, if that was the case, then I guarantee the qual would have every single advertisement in it because they have the most circulation on campus. And if you want to get your point out, you do it through the qual, unfortunately. Because they, they get the most users on campus through the, through the stuff that they do. Um, so it's, it's a completely subjective model to get rid of one organization, like I said. Um, that's, oh yeah, so that's all I have to say. Chris, do you want to say anything else? Uh, yes, I feel your time. Yes, yeah, correct. Uh, I'm actually only going to speak it in my capacity as a member of the committee. Uh, something that was brought up, that I brought up on committee, is uh, specifically that this is the, the legal aspects of this are often talked about as if like, oh, well, we're not lawyers, we shouldn't really consider the legal aspects, but then look at all these Supreme Court cases that I have. It's really a straw man argument, has a lot of fallacies. I hope you don't face that talk, or people are going to call you out on it. Uh, <laughs> as far as, and I do, I very much respect you, uh, I was in the minority opinion of saying we should continue discussing this, because we should beat it to the ground. We should fight bad ideas with the reason why they're bad. Uh, the specific court case that is probably going to be brought up uh, would be Rosenberger v. Virginia. And the basic idea was Rosenberger, uh, it was a uh, Christian publication, and uh, when funding was extended to Rosenberger, um, the Supreme Court held that in order, if that speech was considered government speech, that it would be a violation of the Establishment Clause, separation of church and state. The Supreme Court held in that, in a, it was a 5-4 ruling. Um, uh, it, it essentially held that the speech, seconds. the speech of students is private speech. So to apply uh, the idea that we get to police our own speech is absolutely fallacious in the sense that it's already been upheld by the Supreme Court as being private speech. You can't say that, well, we don't, you know, that's a, the, the point that he's maybe trying to make is that, well, no, this is government speech because we're paying for it, we pay for it, therefore we can say what they can't say. That's not actually necessarily. Ten seconds. And, uh, and this will get, this will get debated in court. The question is, uh, the money that you're going to spend, that we're going to spend as a university talking about this, is probably better spent on a new dining hall, to be honest with you. Uh, um, if we're going to change funding guidelines, this is not the base model that I want to work off of, but just to be humane, I'm talking about this item of legislation. Um, there's like multiple flaws I want to um, point out. Um, that, that the VP Finance is responsible for identifying how much each advertisement costs an advertisement can cost a dollar, five thousand dollars, and then he can change that based on which publication. So you can say, you can say like this publication, this advertisement, this publication costs five thousand, and then the next one, this costs ten thousand. So if you're really going to push this through, add some criteria in this of like what advertisement you find it. Only if you're going to push this document through. Otherwise, I would not support an advertising initiative if we're really going to change. Um, so I walked away from our meeting with campus council and even several meetings with people originally supporting this and what this tries to do. I still support the effort that it's, what it's trying to do and restructuring our system, but I guess what I thought would come out of this is not what I see before me today. Um, I thought it would I remember us talking about a university that kind of has uh, basically like a soap for media. 
with kind of some like stipulations being what they fund. And so I basically thought that's what we were going to make, or that was going to be component of SOFAB with some stipulations in it. It wasn't going to be just down to one person, because I, the way I see this in front of me, I don't even think this will solve the problem that we currently have. If it's just objective, I just, I think it is kind of be us spending another year seeing if this system works, finding out it doesn't, and trying to do something else. And so I really feel that at this juncture, the best option is to reinstate the funding with the changes of like C, option C with the um, increased, you know, emergency funding, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, I guess I just, maybe I didn't put my input in enough in this issue, but what I thought this would achieve, it won't be achieved with this document, so I think we should vote it down. Look, the, the, this model is what I believe, and I mean, I, I've heard a lot about the government speech doctrine from Peter. Um, I've, I've read myself a little bit about it. Um, it's completely legal. It has nothing to do with the First Amendment. Um, everyone arguing about speech, um, that's not the argument. This, regardless of how AS funds, it doesn't affect whether or not you can distribute publications uh, on campus. An EVO AS would decide to eliminate media funding for wherever it's EVO AS. They could just say, we're not going to fund any publication um, and just get rid, of the, get rid of the process entirely. And that's also completely legal. Um, I mean, really, I want to use the metaphor of, of uh, maybe San Diego the city. Now imagine we're all city council members, uh, and uh, we've, we've had a process, a public forum, where we fund media organizations, and we've done this for about a decade. Uh, we fund a gaming magazine, a surfing newspaper, newspaper about what great cuisine there is in San Diego, and then all of a sudden, um, this publication appears uh, that essentially just targets members of the Latino, Latina community. Now, if you were a council member of San Diego, what would you do? Would you continue the status quo and allow funding to continue? Uh, essentially require yourself and require your own organization to continue funding and sponsoring that publication? I think any reasonable per person in this room would agree that if I were a council member of San Diego, I'd probably do something to change the status quo. And uh, there really two, are honestly two options to change the status quo. One is close the public forum and keep it closed permanently. The second is implement government speech. For those that say, why change the status quo for just one organization? Why do we change the status quo for just one organization? Well, how many racist organizations do we need before we change the status quo? I mean, what's the threshold we're using on our own morality where we identify an issue with the current system? Does it need to be two racist organizations? Does it need to be three racist organizations? Does it need to be four? No. One is enough. One is enough. Let's seriously consider this proposal for what it does. It changes the status quo, which I think a lot of people agree is, is not the way we want to continue. And if it is the way you want to continue, um, I mean, really, I hope you can qualify that. Because all I've heard are attacks against this proposal that aren't based on seconds. any actual numerical qualifications. Like the shadiness of AS, like, if you're going to say that, bring up examples. Um, <laughs> bring them up. <laughs> right now. funding process, then as a vendor, why have you changed it until now? Why are you bringing it up now? Um, really, the student regent, both the student regent, the student regent, and the student regent designate have come out in favor of this proposal. That's the entire UC system coming out in favor of this proposal. Let's make some changes. Chris Cruz? 